Hi, I'm Ellen Menny with CTV, Clemson TV. We just got back from interviewing President Barker, who's been Clemson University's president for 14 years. He's a beloved president, and he does lots of wonderful things for the university, namely making us a top 22 university, as well as doing some push-ups in the tiger suit at the Furman game last year. President Barker was lovely to interview, and this is considered his farewell interview, as he will be retiring soon. Well, check out the interview right now with President Barker. I'm Ellen Many. Thanks so much. Now, but what did you want to be when you were growing up? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. Right. <laughs> actually. Um, well, I think I really wanted to be an architect. I, I, I remember discovering that word uh, maybe in, in middle school or high school, and I thought it really sounded neat. You know, right. because nobody knew exactly what it was, but it sounded very sophisticated. So I, I began, got developed the habit of saying that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. But then I said, well, I better learn a little bit more about what, what's involved right. in doing that. And uh, I remember taking some drafting classes in high school, not art classes, but drafting classes. And uh, because once someone said that's what architects do, they draw. Right. And um, and I remember being fascinated by that. But the, the idea of, of being an architect uh, appealed to me early on. That's great. And you did pick up drawing. And I mean, you have, are those your pictures behind no, you? No, those are not. Okay. Those are, that's my teacher oh, wow. uh, okay. who taught me to draw, a man named Joe Young. Now, the, throughout the present home, there's some other drawings. Was he influence on your art? Yeah, okay, he very much great. was. I, I remember him uh, very well trying to explain how to set up a, a, a uh, on, in two dimensions, something that looks like it's three dimensional, right. and uh, that was kind of magic. Yeah. Actually, it was magic in the Middle Ages when they discovered that perspective existed. And right. It was sort of, it was sort of like the um, a major event when that happened. Right. And like your teacher, what kind of mentors have you had in your life? Uh, several. Um, I'm not sure I could could point to any particular ones. My dad, who, who I lost when I was. Uh, 16 years old. Um, my mom is an amazing person. She's now well in her 90s and wow. an amazing person. And I had uh, a lot of, of friends in high school and their families that sort of helped me make it through a time of losing my dad. So they were mentors in many ways. And then the, the whole campus of Clemson has been my mentor over the years. Yeah. A few faculty members in particular, Ben Scarden, this man Joe Young, Hal Coolidge, um, Harlan McClure. Uh, I've been really fortunate to have a number of people who've been willing to uh, give me some guidance when I needed it and uh, I'll always be grateful to them. That's wonderful. And you were an undergraduate student at Clemson That's right. in the 70s, would you say? No, it was the late 60s. I okay. graduated in 1970, so okay. I was on a five-year, a legitimate right. five-year program <laughs> right. um, and uh, in architecture. It's called a Bachelor of Architecture degree. Okay. And so I came in 1965. I, I wasn't admitted oh, to okay. Clemson in the beginning. They said the only way you can come and study architecture here and you come out of state, you're going to have to come in summer school. So Marsha and I were dating in high school at that time and, and everybody that we knew, including her, went to the beach <laughs> the day after graduation. And the day after graduation, I came to Clemson. Oh, wow. That was a tough decision. Yeah, summer school <laughs> the beach. Yeah, but that was not easy. In fact, she was going down there with all these other people that I was, you know, a little bit jealous of that whole thing. Yeah, I can understand that. But that's, that's I began the summer of 65 and finished in, in 1970. Um, what was your favorite thing about Clemson when you were a student? Gosh, I don't know. I, 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 nobody in my family had ever gone to college before, so I didn't, I wasn't really familiar with college campuses. I was sort of trying to find my way about what college is all about, how you apply and how you got in, and because you get some financial aid and those kinds of things. But the, my, my favorite thing about Clemson, I guess, was the feeling that I got when I came here. And I was walking across Bowman Field, and I, the sense of, look, you know, you, you're, you're kind of lost, and uh, you've got a lot of challenges ahead, but this, this place is, is, is where you should be, and, and we'll take care of you. I mean, it was a powerful feeling that, um, even though I, I had to give up going to the beach, I, it was <laughs> the sense that this was the right place for me. And uh, Clemson's been that way ever since. And um, when you were a student, do you have any funny stories that, any antics that you got into maybe? That I can tell? That you can tell on camera? Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> when I was, uh, I was on the track team here, I had a, a partial scholarship, because I guess I was a partial athlete. Right. <laughs> um, 
but at a partial scholarship and I um, was a pole vaulter and I oftentimes would get drawn into the work I was doing down in Lee Hall and didn't realize what time it was and and I, I remember working on a project and hadn't been to bed in, in 48 hours Wow! <laughs> and I was about to go back and get some sleep and I remember the fact that I had missed track practice for two days so I worried about losing that scholarship so I decided I'd have to go at least make an appearance so I checked out a pole vault and pole got dressed and vaulted one time and landed in the foam rubber it was a sunny day in probably about April and I remember thinking man this is comfortable <laughs> and I woke up the next morning oh my god I spent the night in the pole vaulting pit oh, and I no. woke up afraid that I was either dead or I was in the pole vault pit I'm not sure which was worse <laughs> but and I couldn't remember how I got there and then finally realized that you know what had happened and I the dressing room was all locked up so I had to carry my pole back to the oh, dorm no. room and um, yeah those I mean there, there are a lot of of things that um, happened, I guess, out of trying to, to cram as much into my Clemson experience yeah. as I could manage. Definitely. Because I was very much aware that um, that was what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to get engaged in as many things as I could as I could manage. And uh, um, but the, there were there were many other stories like that. And like I said, some of them I can't tell. But <laughs> That's okay. I understand. I'm sure you have a few of those yourself. Well, you know, no, nothing on camera. <laughs> but um, you probably know about the different um, kind of secret student activities that, you know, are on Clemson campus. The secret book, the underground tunnels. Are you aware of those kind of, mm -hmm. in a way? I um, was aware of the tunnels. Okay, I was going to wonder. Was a, when I was a student. Yeah. Um, I mean, because you can look at any kind of uh, map of the campus when you get down into where the plumbing and the systems run on campus and there I remember coming across some maps of those and and the idea that there were that there were tunnels there I, I got far enough just to sort of see down in them okay. and so I didn't go wander around all over campus and nothing tunnel, illegal. I knew they were there they were there <laughs> and that uh, it made sense to me though because you had to get you know all the heating and cooling and mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff to the various buildings on campus but the secret book was um, which is not a secret if we're talking yeah. about it on time. Yeah, I know, right? Was, uh, um, was something that uh, I got a, th a couple of hints about, and I figured out where I might find more clues and, and finally put, a, put those pieces together. And one more question about Clemson memories. Did you ever swim in the reflection pond? No, nope, okay. I did not. I had to swim across Lake Hartwell once, oh, but okay. I didn't swim in... Uh, I didn't swim in the reflection pond. Was that a dare? I don't think you can swim in I don't well, think it's deep enough wade. to swim in it. Yeah. yeah, wading. No, that wasn't a dare. Oh, that okay. had to do with an initiation that would I would have to be expelled if I did it oh, now, okay. which is kind of humbling. What, uh, what initiation was that? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> I will not ask you again. <laughs> I believe it was last year you put on a wonderful performance at what I believe was the Furman game. Uh, you got in the tiger suit. You did push-ups. Um, what went through your head when you did that, and I, why, why do you do this? I don't know. I, I, well, first of all, there were a couple of my fraternity brothers that were, were the Tigers when I was okay. a Tiger when I was here, and I thought it was just really cool they got to go out and, and misbehave and couldn't get in any trouble for it, and I, and I thought that, you know, that would be really neat, and I never had the chance to do that. But then um, I remember thinking that you never know who's in the Tiger suit, and that sort of started the wheels turning about, well, wonder if I should do that and is that appropriate for a university president <laughs> to do and I finally said no it's not appropriate for a university president but it might be appropriate for a Clemson president right. to do and from there it, it sort of led to working with the tiger about how to get out of my business suit and into that suit because we're entertaining a couple hundred people in the presence yeah. box uh, and I would need to get out of that suit and and then back into this business suit uh, towards the end of that game and then you had to calculate how hot it is <laughs> and what I didn't count on was how smelly that suit is. Oh, it sure. is awful and it's it's not easy to do the push-ups with that thing on because it's it's a football helmet actually oh, I'm, really? I want to reveal that the the inside all that headgear is a football helmet and that stuff is just stuck to it and so you um, you're in there and it's um, and it's hot, and so you want to get the push-ups as quickly as possible right. done, so you can 
you know, take the head off and then, and then leave. So I calculated that Furman might be the right time and right. and uh, third quarter might be the right right time to nice. do it. And uh, I was really glad when, I think it was C.J. Spiller finally scored and uh, I could do the push-ups and get out of that thing. Yeah, there's some great videos of that, taking off the tiger head. You know, it's President Barker, what a shock. Yeah, there, there were a lot of people that, that were sort of, Who's the gray-haired guy? What's the tiger <laughs> taking the head off for, which you're not supposed to do? Yeah. Who is the gray-haired guy in the suit? Oh, wow. You can That's see a certain shock on people's yeah. faces. Do you remember how many push-ups you had to do for that? 27. I okay. Think. Nice. I think that's right. And you did them with finesse, so. I, um, yeah, that wasn't the hard part. It was it was getting out of that suit that was right, important. Okay. I was praying for, <laughs> for us yeah. to score so I could do the push up Okay. Between when you went to Clemson and now, what's changed for you and what do you think has changed for the campus? Well, when I left Clemson, our self-concept was different. Um, we saw ourselves as a, um, a school pretty much, uh, our, our universe was South Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, the state of South Carolina. And then it slowly began to change to see ourselves as sort of a regionally strong school. But one thing happened in my absence. I was away for 17 years practicing architecture, teaching some other places before I came back as dean. Um, I noticed there was something different when I came back in 1986. And I began to, to probe a little bit to try to understand what it was. And, and it was winning the national championship in football. Really? Okay. That event changed Clemson's self-concept. It said we are a national university. We can compete with anybody at the national level, and that we need to um, see our future as a, a truly national university. And that that event and the opening of the Brooks Center uh, are two events that, to me, sort of set our sights much higher. And so when I got the ch opportunity to serve Clemson uh, in, in, in 1999 as president, I wanted to build on that. I wanted to, to increase that self-concept that we could compete with anyone in any way in any field of competition uh, and so that we would have a self-concept that would, would not limit our, our imagination and our future. Right. So that, that, but when I think back to how important that national championship was, about that self-concept, I really think that that was a, a turning point for Clemson. And I wasn't here on campus at the time, and there were some ugly things that happened afterwards about probation and a number of other things, but, but still, that, that recognition of Clemson as the best uh, has gone a long way, I think, for, for us to where we are now, and I think it can help build that momentum into our future. Yeah, it's a lot of different people will say that sports, you know, are extra to a school and don't matter, but really they can make a huge difference, like I with Clemson. I think when it has to do with how you see yourself, it, right. uh, that self-concept, it certainly does that. Yeah. And, I, and the whole idea of, of Clemson being one Clemson, so it's not athletics or academics, it's all together. And when you look at the data from the Georgia game this season, and you see what the percent of increase in traffic on our application page was, which is about 200% right. increase. And you see um, the Google searches around the question, where is Clemson University going up 5,400% uh, as a result of that game? Th then you start to see that there is a connection between right. athletics and academics. And I think our, uh, our coaches and our athletic department take great pride in the fact that we're the 21st ranked public university in the country. They know how hard it is to do that because right. You know, they've, they're now in the top 10. Uh, so all of those things, I think, build momentum and improving and, and expanding and challenging our self-concept to even greater heights. We have to wind down the interview soon, it seems like, but um, what's your favorite ice cream flavor at 55 Exchange? Um, peach is hard to beat. Okay, definitely. But they made a, an ice cream flavor called uh, Mississippi Mud, okay. and it was a chocolate with with um, marshmallows and uh, some other thing, chocolate cake in it. Yum. <laughs> well, that's, that's wonderful. Do you yeah. get free ice cream? No, I don't. Oh, no, really? Okay. Uh, wow. We've got, we got some ice cream in the, in the freezer, but it's, we paid for it. Oh. And we don't get... You don't get any free <laughs> blue cheese? You know? No, no. My, my brother's in love with Clumpson Blue Cheese. He lives in North Carolina. He comes with like two coolers wow, with okay. rice, and he just goes loads up. and He eats it 
on everything. Oh, cereal, gosh. I think. Keep on his breakfast cereal. <laughs> kind of final question, wrapping it up. I guess, what are you going to miss most? You're going to be at Clemson still, but about being president, you know. This. This, okay. Just I mean, this, talking this, to this, me. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, this, this idea of, of um, serving as a spokesperson for Clemson students right. and how proud I am of all you all and how, um, how wonderful it is to be able to realize that I'm in some ways paying back a debt to Clemson that, that I felt like I owed for the kind of education I got and the kind of experience I got here and the kind of support that I got here. Because that, that first image or that first impression that I got, that first message that the campus sent to me was that, you know, we're going to take care of you. And it did. And, and now I get to have the opportunity to help students. And, uh, and, and that kind of cycle of that's the way Clemson works, you know. Right. Other people who, who had a scholarship that they awarded me. Now there's a, a major um, scholarship endowment with our name on it that will help students just like I was at that time and that realizing that, that that's the way Clemson works. Yeah. And knowing that, you know, one of those students who might win that scholarship could find a cure for cancer or write the great American novel or serve as the 25th president right. of Clemson. Um, that's very rewarding. Yeah. So. That's, but that, but I, I won't miss the interaction with students because I'll be teaching. Right. But the idea of having the the privilege of being the spokesperson for this great institution is uh, is probably what I'll miss the most. Okay. Well, the Clemson family is always here for you. So, and you're going to be here for the Clemson family teaching. I will. How many people do you think are going to get into your class? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I I wouldn't take a class. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I teach a class each spring. It's called right. the President Seminar. Okay. If I saw that on the pre-registration list, I would not sign it's up. It's a little for that. intimidating. I, I, I think I would be yeah. a little bit nervous about that. But but we have, uh, you know, the class is usually 20, 25 students every spring, okay. and uh, and that's sort of what's been calling me. Yeah. You know, come back and do that. Come Definitely. back and do that full time. And that's I'm looking forward to doing that. Looking forward to being the best faculty member I can be. And and helping, uh, if there's a role for me to play, make sure that our next president gets the kind of support that I've gotten. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited about what this new chapter will hold. Great. President Barker, thank you so much. This you has bet. been wonderful. Thank yeah, you. thank you.